guest speaker is Bhupendra Mishra with his talk about the general relativistic magnetic hydrodynamic simulation of a friction disk around Sagittarius A star. Thank you. So thanks again for the organizers for giving the opportunity to talk in this second conference. So I will be talking about GN imaginary simulations of a friction disk around Sagittarius A star. So here I will not connect the disk with jets or something, so it's only a friction disk. And in accretion disk, I will talk only about geometrically thick and optically thin disks because there are so many models on accretion disks. So I am collaborating with uh, Rode Kluzniak, Marek, and he is the author of this code I am using. Uh, probably some of you have attended this talk already. And Frederick Vincent, and Venchi, and Magic. So outline of the talk will be to Give introduction, I review some basics of GRMHD equations and some mathematical formulas. Then I will describe a bit about accretion disks and uh, how the matter is being described in terms of equations in accretion disks. Then I will present some 2D and 3D simulations of ion torus around Sagittarius A star. So, those of you who are not like working on ion torus or accretion disks, I can tell you. There is a central supermassive black hole and there is a torus around it. We assume the matter is rotating around this black hole. And we will investigate that if this matter has some magnetic field and we consider the GR effects, what will happen to this matter actually? So it will cause magnetorotational instability and some other hydrodynamical instability and it may cause inflow or it may cause oscillations or it may cause outflows. It can also form jets. I will not talk about jets. So actually GRMHD simulations are really challenging in the sense it requires lots of physics to be included in codes. We have to consider the strong gravity because we are very close to the supermassive black hole. We have to consider the hydrodynamics. We have to include magnetic fields because this matter we are considering its plasma, so it has ion electron and it has some dynamo process, unknown dynamo process. We don't know how the magnetic field is exactly being generated in accretion disk. And it's really expensive to do GRMHD simulations in terms of computational resources. So for example, if you have to cover a radii of R in accretion disk, you will need say N jet zones at a particular thickness of the disk. And to cover that whole range, you have to define earlier, you will need this number of zones. So it consumes lots of computational power to do these simulations. We are actually in local, we are still far from global simulations and still it's very expensive. At least the interest for GRMHD simulations is because we have some knowledge of GR, general relativity, and there is a La best laboratory is Sagittarius A star in our galaxy and we know pretty, pretty much about Sagittarius A star so we can test our knowledge of general relativity. So this is ergosphere. So the things are not linear very close to black hole. You have to consider very strong gravity reasons. And since there is a possibility of formation of jets depending on magnetic field configurations. So if there is a reason this vertical magnetic field lines are, if you assume, matter may come and this vertical magnetic field lines on a reason disk will rotate because it's frozen with the accretion disk, it will rotate, wrap the black hole and it forms the helical trajectory. And the matter will go along that trajectory, it can form the jets. So, all the calculations and simulations I will show are based on scale metric, the spin parameter A, mass of the black hole as M. So to describe the matter, we need a energy momentum tensor, which is like a software actually. Not exactly software, but like a software. So if you know this energy momentum tensor, uh, as Professor Miller has shown this beautiful uh, in this beautiful lecture that how these conservation laws are working in GR. 
So if you know this team, you know energy momentum tensor, and you know density, you know forward velocity. You can just use the conservation law to derive all the equations and evolve them numerically. So the most important thing, steam you knew. Depending on your considerations, you can consider different types of fluid with magnetic field, without magnetic field, whatever you want. So I will uh, explain a bit what is MRI actually. We talk about magnetic rotation and instability. So it was first described by Chandrasekhar and some other people in copy flow. So there is there are two coaxial cylinders, they are rotating. And in this way they, they describe the magneto rotational instability. So what happens? For example, you consider the two particles which are connected by magnetic field line in the cylinder and they are at the same radii. Just give some angular momentum to the upper one particle and take some angular momentum from the lower one particle. So upper one is having too much angular momentum, it cannot remain there, it will move outwards lower one will move inwards. Since they are connected with the magnetic field line, the magnetic field line will stretch. And this state will call it torque, which will transport the momentum. So this is a like, it works like viscosity. Because in accretion, we need something which transports momentum outwards to accrete matter inwards. And MRI was proposed by Galvez Sarali. It was like a discovery because First time he implemented magneto rotational instability in accretion disks. So this is a toy model, which is I explained that this is how the angular momentum will be transported. If so, to define fluid, you need this energy momentum tensor. You can choose only fluid without any viscosity. You can choose viscosity, then you can choose magnetic field. For even efficient, you can choose also radiative uh, term of this energy momentum tensor. So this is the simplest form of energy momentum tensor actually. You can solve it even analytically, some of the people did it. To include viscosity is really dependent on this uh, prescription, alpha prescription of Sakurasana because it's still the major issue of accretion is we don't know exactly how to describe the viscosity. Since the it's plasma, this is Faraday tensor, we can include also the magneto magnetic part because we don't consider electric field. Then radiative part as well. So if I will have this team you knew and I have all this the generalized form which, which we are using. So I will uh, we will include all these terms to evolve these equations numerically. <coughs> and since there are heating process, so to carry out the energy, there should be some like radiative cooling process because some of the energy uh, heat will be convected inwards to black hole, but some of that will be radiated. So depending on optical thickness, so it's, it's if optically thin there are four processes to radiate like Bremsch Trollung and synchrotron and then these photons may be comptonized Bremsch Trollung and then synchrotron and in optically thick case you can use T4 law to describe so we will include these radiative processes during the evolution of the equations because previously people were doing like first they will solve the equations without radiation then they will post process the data just to include the radiation but Chris Fagel probably you have attended his talk in previous conference so he included first time the radiative equations and evolved it at the same time without like post processing and the heating process comes because of shock waves viscous internal heating due to viscosity possibility of magnetic reconnections so for describing the <coughs> black hole we actually know it with three properties mass spin charge charge we will not consider it here because it's not important in our case 
and Noel theorem says that we cannot describe anything else apart from these three parameters. It's very hard to describe the spin of the black holes. Still, we have some estimations, which is not like precise, but we assume them like as a, we consider that, but we are not sure about the spin of the black holes. This is Polish donut model proposed by Pramovic et al. in 1978. It was an analytical model without any magnetic field, just a few tori around the black hole, and it's very easy to solve it analytically. You don't need numerical approach for this. If you have T mu mu, which I described before, just plug it here and you will have this equation. You can plot the equipped surfaces. Here lambda is a dimension as parameter to describe the angular momentum. You can choose the value of lambda from 0 to 1 and you can compute that where is the cusp and where is the center of the torus. So it's a stationary torus, there is no intro because there is no viscosity, no MRI. Now people investigated the even more generalized form of Energy momentum tensor also including the magnetic term, and it looks like this. So we'll just plug it in conservation equations, and we will evolve it numerically. And in these simulations, uh, I use this poloidal field inside the torus, like four loops of poloidal magnetic field. And if Sagittarius A star has a spin 0.5, and beta is like 10 gas to magnetic pressure. And so the inner part of the torus will like 3.3 and the center of torus is at 5.6 and the angular momentum at the center of torus is 2.2 and Iskola is at 4.2. Okay. So the situation is like this. We initially set up a torus here with the described parameter before so it lies the inner region of the torus center is somewhere here and initially we set up the torus and we just evolve it numerically and we'll see how the instability will grow and how the matter will accrete. So in these simulations, I didn't include the cooling because we are focused for Sagittarius A star, which is under luminous. And I will show why we don't need cooling process here because this radiate. There is a limit of mass accretion rate and the range of mass accretion rate is 10 to minus 7 to 10 to the power minus 9 solar masses per year. And then in this case, we don't need to include the cooling. So this is without cooling, the mass density evolution. So initially torus looks like this. After 204 light torsion time, it looks like this. So this simulation is in actual time, it's around one and a half hour. Because in the orbital period at the center of torus, the 10 gravitational radii is roughly 60 minutes. And MRI grows roughly in one orbital period. So within a one orbital period, magnetorotation and instability go and it will start to transport the angular momentum and matter will start to creep. So here, uh, this is a movie actually. So as simulation evolves, MRI is growing and it transports angular momentum and it matter moves inwards. These are magnetic field lines actually. So the, here we are considering ideal MHD. So magnetic field lines are floating in plasma and magnetic field lines are just moving inwards. In this this movie actually it shows how MRI grows and it transports angular momentum outwards. So this is angular momentum this color coded and as MRI grows, the angular momentum is being transported outwards and this will make the accretion of the matter in, in towards the black hole. Mm. Oops. These are the velocity vectors. So initially we assume that there is a background because we cannot simulate in vacuum. So we have a constant background around the torus. So torus is here and initially torus is stationary and as the 
distorts to a creep. The velocity vectors, at least, difficult to see from the velocity vectors here are very, very small. So matter accretes very slowly, and it starts from here actually. So here the matter is still unaffected, but slowly the whole matter will move inwards. So this is a paper last year published by D. B. et al. and they showed that. Actually, cooling is not important. Sagittarius A star has, it has been already predicted. But here they consider self-consistent radiation in equations. So they check that whether cooling is really not important. And here it is not important. Oops. So here <coughs> these various simulations are for with cooling and without cooling for different accretion rates. So if the mass accretion rate is 10 to the power minus 7 here. It's here. So the difference is slightly larger as compared to here because it's 10 to the power minus 9 solar masses. <coughs> this is the density profile, and this is magnetic field line. So magnetic field is not changing much, but as the accretion rate increases, the density is changing. So it, it means we need only cooling if the accretion rate is higher. For low accretion rates, we don't need the cooling. And this is the simulation from uh, this paper at least. So this is without cooling and this is with cooling. So at the same time this it accreted more matter and this there is high density region here and here it's not high density region and this is for yeah with cooling and without cooling. This is a logarithmic plot. So the conclusion of this paper was that we don't need cooling. So I, I didn't include coolings in my results. So what will happen if, like in previous talk, the, there was one model and there is toroidal field. And of course, in two dimension, we cannot see the MRI. So there will be no inflow actually. So here it's a 2D simulation of a torus with a toroidal field. So in this case, we will not be able to see, see MRI. It doesn't mean MRI will not grow. So in this case, the matter shouldn't flow inwards. So it will, it will remain torus. As so there is some numerical artifact around the torus, but the matter is not flowing inwards. The torus is stationary there because the, we cannot see the MRI. And this is the previous one simulation was for spin 0.5 and if you will increase the spin you see the size of torus is very very small and this inner region of the torus lies between marginally stable and isco yeah marginally bound and isco actually so here this this is for poloidal field rather than for toroidal field. So the previous one was for toroidal in 2D, there was no inflow, but here it will inflow because poloidal magnetic field will cause a magneto rotational instability. Yeah, it's very small torus. Well, so in 2006, uh, very clever trick used <coughs> by Komisoro. He used this uh, toroidal magnetic field configuration and it was beautiful in the sense he got the stationary torus because it mimics the Polish donut model. And so actually this commissarial model is like a test problem for GRMHD codes. This is uh, described in kilometric and axisymmetric stationary flow and purely toroidal field. And purely rotational rate. There is no radial or theta component of velocity. So this is perfectly test problem for checking your GRMHD codes. And the interesting thing which is, has been presented in previous talk that this extra term in this Polish donut model comes only if you will choose a toroidal magnetic field. And this causes it as a magnetized Polish donut actually. 
so this is a stationary torus and it will be stationary even if there is a providing magnetic field because in this model we have a commissoro assumed commissoro assumed that the radial and theta component of velocity is at zero so this is the 3d commissoro model actually Actually, it's not actually 3D because we are putting this constant that there is no radial inflow, no theta. So it's actually not 3D, but we simulated in 3D, and there shouldn't be any inflow because because of this, oops, because of these constants. So we many of the people used it for oscillating the torus, like for vertical or something other perturbations to see this but actually in a previous paper before few months one someone used it and he didn't explain that it's a 2d model and that there cannot mri cannot be seen and he said that matter is not flowing it's stationary and we can perturb it but actually it's stationary because of the constraints we are imposing so this this is the last simulation. So torus is stationary in this commissaro model, even if there is a strongly magnetized toroidal field because MRI MRI is actually it's difficult to say here it's MRI stable or unstable because commissaro didn't check it. Some of the people are checking it. But the no inflow reason is because of the constraints putting in this model. So I think that's all. Thank you.